Yes, so thanks very much for being here today. And thanks again also to Jerry, who's actually in the audience, who actually got me to speak here today about something that I'm so passionate about, which is crypto assets and Bitcoin. So we're just going to start off with a brief introduction about myself. Then we're going to dive into what exactly are crypto assets. What is blockchain technology, which is the underlying technology behind these crypto assets? What is Bitcoin, which everybody seems to be talking about at the moment? Altcoins as well, which are alternative cryptos to Bitcoin. And then we're also going to conclude and just give a brief introduction into my investment plan. So this is just a little bit about my background. So I first got involved in the crypto asset space back in December of 2015. And I really have my cousin Terry to thank for this. He was involved in crypto probably in 2011, 2012 time. So he was in very, very early at the stage where it was basically dollars. And so he said to me that there's this crypto asset or this asset rather that's used on the internet. It's basically magic internet money. So I actually bought some. And then it continued to rise and rise in value, and I continued to buy more and more as it continued to rise. And then, of course, the likes of Ethereum and other altcoins came along at the time. And so that sort of brings us to today. So today, I focus on both trading and investing in the crypto asset market, as well as NFTs, the metaverse, and more. Which, again, NFTs, the metaverse, is definitely a conversation for a different day. So my crypto asset portfolio has increased by over 10,000 of percent from 2015, mostly thanks to the altcoins, and thousands of percent in the current bull cycle which we're in right now. And these assets have much more growth to come, and we'll show you this just later on. So really, I thrive on finding hidden gems in the crypto asset space. These are tokens which have increased by over 100x in investment. One of our biggest ones and most recent ones was a 120x investment, which occurred in 18 months. And this is just one of 15 that we actually invest in on a weekly basis. So what are these crypto assets that everybody seems to be talking about? Well, crypto assets are commonly referred to everybody. Crypto assets are commonly referred to by everybody as cryptocurrency, but really I consider them crypto assets more than a currency as they are a digital asset which can be transferred, stored, or traded electronically. Cryptocurrency, unlike fiat currency, is not actually issued by a central bank, an e-money institution, or credit institution. So you've maybe heard the term central bank digital currency being floated around, or digital dollar, or digital pound. It is important to distinguish that central bank digital currencies are, of course, issued by the likes of the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England. They are not, in fact, crypto assets. So you should also distinguish between traditional currencies, such as the fiat currency, which most of you will have in your pocket, and also cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin. So with traditional currency, a bank typically holds and custodies your money. It is centralized, so a government for example, or an entity rather, such as the Bank of England, will lay down the rules. Then government regulations or bank policies may limit your ability to transfer money. For example, you may not be able to send money cross-border. You also may incur fees to transfer money. So one of the biggest problems with banks today is the liquidity problem. So trillions and trillions of dollars are tied up in accounts in different countries, and this liquidity needs freed up so small to medium-sized enterprises can actually utilize this liquidity to improve their businesses. And also with traditional currency, you rely on regulators and the bank itself to make sure your money isn't lost or stolen. But of course, the benefit of this is, is you're insured. I think the last time I checked, up to 75,000 pounds. So with crypto assets, you hold your money directly. So you self-custody your crypto assets. There's no central entity that you can run to if you lose your password or lose your keys and recover your funds, which of course is unfortunate, and there's many people who have now lost an absolute small fortune. So there's also no limit on transactions for cryptocurrency, or at least the possibilities are endless. There's some blockchains out there, such as Solano, 
which can actually scale to 500,000 transactions per second. To put that into comparison, Visa does roughly 30,000 transactions per second. And again, with cryptocurrency, you can transfer money pretty close to free right now, which of course has a massive advantage over traditional currencies. Blockchain records are also public and unchangeable. However, you rely on yourself not to lose your crypto wallet. So it is very important that you secure your crypto wallet because you cannot run to the FCA and say that 75 grand that you've sitting on Coinbase is now missing because it's been hacked. Unfortunately, they can't do anything about it. So this is why I believe the crypto asset market is an extremely infant market. This just shows the total cryptocurrency market cap, which as of today is just under $2 trillion. And here's the total New York Stock Exchange market cap, which the last time I checked was $26.4 trillion. The crypto asset market cap is not only going for stocks and shares, but also derivatives, real estate, gold. So this really puts into perspective how early we are. And so I wasn't around at the time, or I was actually one or two year old at the time, but I've made a comparison between the late 90s and early 2000s and what we're experiencing today with crypto assets. So just like back then, there was companies who were looking at investment and they simply put .com in their name. And of course this led to massive, massive seed investment and VC investments. But when the bubble burst with the dot-com crisis, only the 1% survived, but most importantly thrived. So that's like Amazon, for example. And why Amazon thrived is a great team, tech maturity, but most importantly, it had a real life use case. And crypto assets are going through almost an identical cycle, as 99% of cryptos out there are scams, or else they just have no use case. So I think it would be pretty silly to do a talk on crypto without talking about China, especially what happened just last week. So China came out and said that they've banned Bitcoin. This is in fact the 22nd time that they've done this. They've done it in 2013 and 2017. It's really the same recycled news. And what this leads to is weak hands leaving the market. It happens time and time again. It's happened all 22 times in fact. Just back in the 21st of March, or May, sorry, of this year, the exact same thing happened. And so, as the slide is before as well just stated, just like the internet, we have hurdles to get over. This is an article which was pulled up, and it says the internet may just be a passing fad as millions give up on it. I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend the world today with no internet in it. And I really think we're gonna go through a similar cycle with both crypto assets, Bitcoin, and blockchain technology. And just the last point in relation to China, it really is important to zoom out. So if we just sort of overlook the first four, which are obviously the big social media giants, Twitter, Facebook, Google, and Snapchat, we can go to Bitcoin, when it was actually banned in December of 2013 by China. And from then, it has went up by over 5,000% in value. So next, we're going to discuss just the underlying technology behind crypto assets. So that is blockchain technology. So to keep it simple, a blockchain is a continuously growing list of records called blocks. And they are secured, linked, and verified using cryptography. They contain a hash of the previous block, which contains these three things, a timestamp and transaction data. They are, however, completely verifiable, but it is important to remember that they are susceptible to 51% attacks on the network. Blockchain really is going to lead to the internet of value. This is, where infor for, this is where information today moves just as quick as data. The biggest hurdle with this is payments. So Swift actually runs in legacy technology still from the 70s. It hasn't improved, it hasn't innovated, except for Swift Go actually a couple of months ago. But in relation to that, it is extremely slow and clunky compared to crypto assets and blockchain technology in relation to transactions per second and of course scalability. So I believe that blockchain and crypto are in a similar state as the internet was in the late 90s. 
And the blockchain is not only here to stay, but it is also a technology that will transform many industries. So you've got industries such as title records, which is where NFTs will come in. Unfortunately, we wouldn't have the time to dip into NFTs. You have intellectual property, microfinance, governance, cross-border payments, which is one of the biggest hurdles the crypto asset will solve, or the biggest problems the crypto asset will solve. You've got prediction markets, the sharing economy, crowdfunding, identity management, which is a huge one for blockchain technology. And the reason for this is, is they can verify identities as the blockchain is open, transparent, and verifiable. There is actually a company called IOHK, which is solving this problem or addressing this problem in Ethiopia. So it means that farmers that have crop fields, which normally couldn't get access to insurance, can now get access to insurance via these identity management and decentralized finance protocols. And of course, with healthcare, which you can track the whole way along the supply chain, exactly where everything came from. So what is Bitcoin? The thing that everybody seems to be talking about at the moment. So Bitcoin was actually labeled a fraud back in 2017 by Jamie Dimon, who is actually the current CEO of, of course, JP Morgan. But now, in 2021, at the start of this year in January, he actually came out and said, the crypto assets, specifically Bitcoin, are now accessible to clients that have a net worth of over $2 million. So it really showed you how the tides have turned. In 2017, it's a fraud, also referred to as rat poison by Warren Buffett, and now they're investing in it. So to keep it simple, Bitcoin is the first crypto asset, and I sort of see it as a hedge against inflation, more of a store of value than anything. So we'll have to look at just briefly what a store of value is. So a store of value is an asset that can retain value over time, and you can be reasonably certain that its value would not depreciate over time, and in fact, it could actually hold its value or appreciate in value. Bitcoin is also both scarce and indestructible. It cannot be copied or spent twice, which is one of the biggest problems in today's society. These are some of the many reasons why Bitcoin will get more valuable over time. So Bitcoin is scarce because there's only 21 million Bitcoin ever in existence, no more, but they can always find more gold. Bitcoin is also extremely portable. To ship gold, for example, from China to America, it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars logistically to get right, and it's just an absolute headache. Where in relation to Bitcoin, you can send a transaction in just a few minutes with the same value of the gold. So for example, you could send $100 billion worth of Bitcoin in a matter of minutes. And one of the real sort of drawings with Bitcoin is the stock to flow model that it's based on. So stock is the existing supply. So the existing supply of Bitcoin, that's available, or the total supply rather, of course, is 21 million. However, the existing supply is in fact just under 19 million. And there's actually around 4 million Bitcoin, which is supposed to be lost. There's actually 1.1 million Bitcoin, which is in the wallet of Satoshi Nakamoto, the anonymous founder of Bitcoin. I personally don't think that will ever be moved. So that is also considered as lost Bitcoin. So if you look at this model, which has been used many, many times in relation to an asset, the new production of Bitcoin that still has to come in is so low in comparison to the existing supply. So of basic demand and supply, I think it's clear to see that Bitcoin will be a higher price as time goes on, a higher value as it becomes more scarce year after year. And just a couple of, or one misconception on Bitcoin, many people think that Bitcoin is actually anonymous, when in fact it is actually pseudo-anonymous. If somebody wants to, they can very, very easily trace your Bitcoin transaction back to, for example, your Coinbase wallet. A lot of people have a misconception that Bitcoin's, you know, used by, use people in the dark web and whatever else, but it's, it's extremely easy to actually trace a Bitcoin transaction. The Bitcoin network is, is completely open, transparent and can be viewed by everybody anywhere in the world. That really is one of the beauties of it. And so we also have altcoins. So there's just two up here. We have Cardano, which is actually one of the, the parent companies of IOHK. 
And the big thing with that is, is the identity management in Ethiopia. That's just one example. So that's what they're solving. They're also solving the governance protocol as well in countries like Ethiopia and other African countries. And the reason for this is, is that there's so much bad dealings that go on in countries like this in relation to elections, where it can now be made fair, open and transparent through blockchain technology. We also have XRP, which is the fastest, cheapest crypto asset out there. It can settle a transaction in just three to four seconds, where, for example, if I was to send one of you in the audience 10 pounds, that 10 pounds goes out of my account and into yours. But in fact, in the background, it hasn't actually settled yet. There's a due diligence there which needs to go through. And so XRP solves this problem. It solves the liquidity problem by freeing up so much money for small to medium-sized enterprises, as well as, of course, large banks, to use this money for other purposes. So we now have some future perspectives of crypto assets. So a lot of people now think that institutional money is already in the crypto asset space. I would say that actually is a fair point to an extent, but the majority of institutions haven't even woken up to crypto assets yet. They will eventually, and once this happens, it won't be a $2 trillion market. In my opinion, it will be hundreds of trillions in the next decade or two. And really, with crypto assets like any technology or any business, adoption is what will make the real difference in relation to the value of a crypto asset. If you don't have adoption and nobody's using it, it's simply going to fall to zero. And again, crypto assets are similar to the internet back in the 90s. They're really, really early. 99% of them will go to zero. And it is really important to distinguish the 1% that will not only survive, but thrive. Because there will eventually be a crash with crypto where 99% of them fall to zero. And of course, digital assets will be widely considered as a new asset class. I believe crypto assets are already being considered a new asset class. There's many asset manage which managers which are allocating 5 to 10% of their portfolio towards crypto, which normally would only contain stuff like stocks, shares, derivatives, and real estate. So would I still consider it a good time to invest? This is a question I probably get a couple of times a day. And the answer is yes. The crypto asset market is only worth just over, or just under, sorry, $2 trillion at the time that this was done. And it is an extremely infant market. And again, the reason why it's an infant market is that institutions haven't even woken up to this space yet, and real adoption hasn't came yet. And the reason for that is, is the central bank digital currencies, so the digital dollar, the digital pound, the digital euro, which will come in between now and the estimate 2025. And so this is our portfolio performance, the exciting stuff. So a DCA plan is what I use to invest in the crypto asset market. So I invest on a weekly basis. Many people invest on a monthly basis or six months or whatever it happens to be. And the benefit of a DCA plan is, is that it allows you to fight volatility. So if you just put one lump sum in of, say, a thousand pounds that you've sitting in your bank account or 10,000 pounds or whatever it happens to be, you don't know what the market's going to be like tomorrow, the next week, the next year. In my opinion, the best thing to do is dollar cost average your investment over a set period of time. So in this example, we have a dollar cost averaging plan done over six months, which is actually common among our investors. And so if you were an investor and you were following our exact investment plan, you would have turned your $1,000 back on the 22nd of April of this year into just over $17,000 in the space of just six months. And these are investing in tokens that I've picked out that have a real team, tech maturity, and real life use case behind them, because 99% of them don't, and they're simply gonna pump and then dump. And I can tip my hat to anybody that gets out before the dump, because personally, I don't think I ever could. I would just continue to hold on. And so we also have the 80X and 50X tokens, so as I stated at the start of the presentation, there was a 100 plus X token that we actually called around 18 months ago. And so there's currently now an 80X token and 50X token on CryptoClear, 
which again, we believe will cater or will capture, sorry, at least half a percent of their total addressable market, which will lead to an 80x gain from its current price. I think it would be actually 90x gain at the moment because it's actually down a little bit. And so what do we actually do at CryptoClear and what are our future plans? So what we offer right now is an educational platform. We're really starting from the foundations because most people don't even know what a crypto asset is. We also tokenize assets on the blockchain and we provide one-to-one -one consultations to set you up with a complete A to Z of crypto asset investing as well as trading. And some exciting plans for the future are we plan to develop and build a crypto asset fund which is both regulated and audited so everybody can invest in crypto. There's no need to learn how to custody your crypto and wallets and worry about your security. It's all done for you. We're also going to develop a crypto asset exchange which is going to be a one-stop shop and include every crypto there is for you. And with much more, which we'll keep for wraps on, for now. And so just a little bit of contact info. Please make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And of course, if you have any questions, you can contact me at info at crypto-clear.co.uk. Thank you. One, two, one, two. Okay, I'm going to ask Johnny to stay on stage for a sec. I think that was one of the best presentations today. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, I just want to say that because I've been here since nine o'clock this morning. Um, some presentations, oh yeah. Other ones, brilliant. This one's a great one because you know what you're talking about and you're, I'm not going to, I'm not going to kind of like summarize here, but you're only what, you graduated like two or three years ago. Um, so I didn't actually graduate, no. I ended up in my second year at Queen's sort of just telling them I need to focus on the crypto assets and the business, so I sort of went that angle. But um, yeah, I, I got into crypto when I was 17 year old, and really, again, I owe it to my cousin for getting me into it, you know. But um, yes, it's a real, real exciting space. It's 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 so so early, and it's only it's only at its infancy and has a lot of maturity. I only uh, I asked that again as well, just because not to, to not to say you're too young to be doing it, but I'd imagine obviously you're working in a new industry and you're quite young as well, so. I'm, I'm guessing one of the challenges that maybe you face is questions around credibility rather than obviously the expertise that you clearly have. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. You know, sometimes you need people behind you with a bit of experience where if somebody sort of sees me walk into your room, you know, they think, you know, who's he to tell me, you know, how you sort of, you know, dollar cost average or invest. But um, yes, I mean, we have over 200 members currently on the platform and every single member is you know, it's to give us amazing advice, we'll have all, or feedback, sorry, we'll have all five-star reviews. So we're really, really happy with the feedback of what we've built. Great stuff. I just, uh, just round of applause to Johnny. I think it was a great presentation, really informative. I think it made me understand a little bit more about cryptocurrency, and um, I think that's where we all need to start with an industry that obviously is starting to hit with the venture capital firms, the banks, I'm sure PwC is kind of looking at that as an industry as well. So have you had any conversations with corporates out there to try and help you develop what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, we have actually. We've actually, um, a Swiss bank actually reached out to us in relation to the crypto asset fund to build a regulated and audited crypto asset, well, um, product so people can go into their online banking and invest in crypto clear as an ETI, which would mean that you can invest in crypto above board and regulated without actually having to worry about the custody or security of your assets. Awesome. Okay, final round of applause for Johnny. Well done, Johnny. Great Thank to you. see. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs>